Listening to the Astro Energy Show on Blog Talk Radio. Today is March 1st, and it is a beautiful day here in Orlando, Florida. So, in Orlando, at least, March came in like a lamb. So, let's see how that works this year. I hope it goes out like a lamb, too. So, wow, this week it is busy as usual. Let's just get, call up a chart here. I don't know. I thought I had one. Let me see. Nope, that's not it. So um, we've got a lot going on. As Again, I already said that, as usual, a lot going on. Um, I'm just buying time to get my chart up. I apologize. So um, I've got like five different applications open, and for some reason my program is just so slow. Okay, here we are. So the sun is in Pisces today. Yay, Pisces. Pisces is going to make us all feel a little drowsy. And not only is the sun in Pisces in the last day, he was conjunct Neptune. So that probably just added to the difficulty. We have Venus and Mercury in Aquarius, and they are within seven degrees. So they are conjunct by orb, and an orb is just the um, distance between them. So Venus is uh, seven degrees away, and I go by eight degrees of orb, so or an arc of eight degrees. So that way, you know, if it's within that eight degrees, then they're considered to be in aspect to each other. So Venus is desire nature and Mercury is our mind. And in Aquarius, it brings a lot of energy to uh, desiring to talk, desiring to uh, have other people understand our ideas, um, inventions, inventiveness, bringing new products to the marketplace that are unique and different. Um, so, you know, it's a really strong energy of autonomy, especially for women. It's a time of like standing up and saying, you know what, I'm tired of you treating me that way and you can't do it anymore. So um, if you've been feeling that way, like you're just, you've had it and now you're going to lay your boundaries down, that's part of it. The sun is also ego, and conjunct Neptune, it kind of takes the wind out of the sails of the ego right now, especially opposite Jupiter and Virgo. There's um, a pragmatic energy of Jupiter and Virgo and a spiritual side, but retrograde, they, the Jupiter and Virgo energy is more structured. And well, it's structured anyway, just being in Virgo, but in retrospect or in retrograde, um, it just brings us more into ourselves and makes us aware of how we need to stand up for ourselves and how we need to express ourselves and not be stepped on anymore. So the combination of the sun with Neptune saying, oh, we're going to break down the ego, and Jupiter retrograde in Virgo saying, but I'm not going to get walked on anymore, and at the same time, the point of a finger of God aspect, which is two inconjuncts connected by a sextile. That means Jupiter is in, in conjunct to Uranus, and he's also in conjunct to Venus, and Venus and Uranus are in sextile to each other. So it's like this triangle shape that if you turned it upright would look like a Christmas tree. It's a very skinny Christmas tree, but um, Jupiter is at the apex of that. So right now, Jupiter's retrograding and He's bringing us a stronger awareness of expansion, of expansion around uh, healing energy, but yet healing ourselves. Because Virgo is the sign of the hermit, so we want to look inward to our own needs, and normally we are giving up our needs to help others, and that's how Virgo works. It's the healing sign, so it's of service. In retrograde with Jupiter, which is a much more... Oh, I don't even, I, I can't even think of the right word to express what I'm thinking about it. Um, Jupiter just, you know, I say it over and over, but I guess the words are accurate. It wants to get on with things. It just wants to do, and it doesn't want to be bothered by the details. So that energy is infused into Virgo. So Virgo, the detail-minded, service-oriented person, is now feeling, you know, I, I just need to get on with things. And 
intro, introspectively, they are really trying to understand their motivations around what's going on and how to move forward, how to deal with the issues that they've been presented. And Jupiter can be very, um, it can, well, in an earth sense, this is interesting because Jupiter is the ruler of real estate in Shelley astrology. <laughs> I've, you know, honestly, uh, I've got to tell you that that's an observation. That's, you know, that's what astrology is, is observing patterns. And, you know, it may, it may very well be the natural ruler of real estate, but by traditional astrology, you would think it would be something like Taurus or Cancer, because Taurus rules money and possessions and Cancer rules the home and family. But um, astrologically, influences show that Sagittarius highly influences the real estate market. So that's what I assign to it. And that's part of the intuitive astrology aspect. Um, intuitive astrology is knowing that there's something that's happening and you just know it is. So you bring that into uh, astrology when you do readings. So I'm just giving you that so that you understand a little bit more clearer how I work or how I process. But um, so Sagittarius, of course, Saturn is in Sagittarius right now. The moon as of today is now in Sagittarius. So it is a bit of an expansion on some level of, astro of uh, real estate, but it is also a time of ownership of how we behave in that market, in that realm, because Jupiter rules Sagittarius and he's in Virgo details retrograde squaring Saturn. So that square is making it more difficult to get those deals done. If you're selling your house, there's going to be something that's not quite lining up between the planets right now with um, where everybody's on board, especially uh, Saturn about to go retrograde. Jupiter already is retrograde and squaring each other. So let's see. We've got Uranus in Aries today. Like I said, he is in conjunct Jupiter. So he is... 150 degrees away from Jupiter, and that means that they are not seeing eye to eye, but there is a tremendous amount of power with that finger of God going into Jupiter. But Uranus is making things uncomfortable from a standpoint of taking action of your own accord. And interestingly, he, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, which he is sextile to with Venus. So Venus and Uranus are on board. So women, humanitarianism, taking action, um, self-promotion, Lady Gaga at the Oscars, that would be a, a great example of Venus in Aquarius and Uranus in Aries. Um, Jupiter in Virgo retrograde in difficult aspect to both of those, but yet working somehow synergistically, it means that there is a tremendous amount of shift and change. Virgo is a feminine sign. Jupiter is expansion. And it is taking us, giving us the opportunity to look backwards and see what works, what didn't work, how we can make inroads to other cultures. And in this case, it could even be women as a separate culture that maybe we're not, we haven't viewed women in an integrative way. And the Virgo energy is very much about standing up for women, for receptive energy, and doing something for others. So there is a really strong uh, combination of energies bringing us awareness around feminine issues right now. Then we have a Jupiter sextile to Pluto. So 120 degrees away from Pluto. Again, Pluto is a feminine in a feminine energy of Capricorn, but it, and is the ruler of feminine Scorpio. Although I think I mentioned this last week, Scorpio can be very intense and seemingly more masculine, but it is the feminine expression of a of masculine idea of asserting oneself, but it, doing it from an intuitive standpoint, from an introspective and deep emotional standpoint capricorn changing structures so major change around structures as it relates to jupiter which is foreign affairs this could be a time of 
shifting and changing uh, around women's issues in other cultures. And Pluto is still squaring Uranus by two degrees. They're not going to connect exactly again, but they are still within a square 16 Pluto and 18 Uranus and Aries. So those two are still talking, but they are, and they are not seeing eye to eye, but they are having to deeply shift and change the fabric of society and the fabric of ideologies and how we go about masculine energy and feminine energy in this world because Pluto is very sexual and Capricorn is restrictive and a bit puritanical, wants everything to follow the rules and not so free to allow. Uranus is definitely about allowing rules Aquarius and wants to just express and be creative and conceptual in Aries, which is about forcing the issue head to the wall, hitting the horns of the uh, ram right against the structure. So Pluto and Uranus are still having this battle for control on some level. And um, Jupiter, once again, is the central figure to that disagreement being enshrined to Pluto, so wanting to help change the structure through feminine energy and squaring Uranus in Aries, which is a bit of the masculine energy. And so there is definitely an undercurrent of men's issues and women's issues, men's power and authority and drive versus feminine receptive. Uh, We've got to find a new way to do things, and that's very reflected in politics right now. So... That being said, um, I'm finding this week to be a rather difficult week, I think, for everybody. As we had the full moon last week, we're heading towards the new moon. And the new moon in Pisces is going to be a time of dreamy quality and will make us all drowsy. But that's in, I believe, in one week from now, we've got it. I don't have the exact date right next to me, but um, yeah, we're about midway between the the full moon and the new moon, so it's going to be next week. And what I've been finding is a lot of people are having a difficult time processing what seems to be this turning of the wheels and not getting anywhere, which does happen occasionally. I remember I went through it a great deal last year and the year before where you're chomping at the bit, ready to move to the next level, ready to go, and nothing's happening. So as we observe the chart, we find the areas that are shifting and changing, and the other planets like Jupiter and Saturn and soon to be, well, no, I take it back. Uranus is going to be a little bit of time, thankfully. Um, What happens is the planets retrograde and they go back into that energy that we just explored. And it shores us up a little bit stronger, especially Saturn and Sagittarius is going to dig his heels in and say, no, this is where I'm at. This is what I have to do. And until now, Saturn's been going pretty quickly forward in Sagittarius since December. And so for two months, we've been pretty all out in the Sagittarius energy. And we've been moving forward, really um, building new connections, foreign affairs, strong uh, partnering energy from far away. Uh, What are we doing to create a new career? Where are we going with that? And as he retrogrades, he's going to go back over what he's accomplished. And feel like, oh, did I do the right thing? Am I in the right place? What's going on now? Like um, A little bit uncomfortable, although interestingly, when Saturn goes retrograde, I always observe this energy of Jupiter. You know, it's in its opposite energy, so to speak. It, It goes backwards and it kind of expresses more of a Jupiterian energy, which is um, more optimistic because Saturn forward, he isn't sure of himself all the time. He can get can get fear, fearful, not, you know, of course, he's just exploring Sagittarius again for the first time in about 28 years since the last time he was at this degree. And so it's like, oh, yeah, you know, so for anyone younger than 28, this is the first time you've experienced Saturn and Sagittarius. So 
it's a new energy. It's a new expression of it. And it's this, I've, I've just got chills with this. It's this exploring how we can build inroads diplomatically with other countries and, you know, other people, people of other cultures. So that is a tremendous uh, fabric of what's going on right now in our world that the shifts and changes are happening, especially with Aquarian energy going on right now, uh, Venus and Mercury. And believe it or not, by 2020, we're going to have, and even 2018, uh, Uranus changes signs in 2018 into Taurus. So that's about money and possessions and new ideas and shifts and changes from the collective idea of what money is to something more local, which Uranus tends to bring about more local energies and not as much overriding. This is the way everything has to work for everybody, but uh, bringing in those ideas in how we can all be individuals, which is what Uranus truly loves to express. And Aquarius just needs to have individuality, individualism. So 2018 is a big shift for that. And then, um, 2020, when Pluto goes into Aquarius, again, is the backing up of that idea. We're going from this overriding uh, rule-the-world mentality to everybody has something to contribute to the collective. And it isn't communistic or socialistic, per se. It is humanitarian. And I guess that's how I look at it, is that we all have individuality. And instead of having this idea that one way of thinking can work for everybody, we are realizing in our own lives, in our personal lives, in what we see from other people and how we feel about our jobs and how we feel about what we're doing with our lives and where we're going with it, that we can no longer do what other people prescribe us to do and we are finding our own voice, part of what is going on. So, Today's subject, allowing and awareness and really awakening, are very important. And I wanted to talk about them because I know people are struggling right now with letting go of old issues and letting go of situations that relate to structure, the Pluto and Capricorn. And Jupiter and Virgo is asking us to look at our own lives and to find where we can heal, where we need to heal in those lives. Right now, Chiron is at around 19 Pisces. I've got to get my chart that shows the asteroids to tell you exactly what it is. But uh, Chiron, oh, it's a 20. So Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron wants us all to look deep within to our faith and to how we're connected to all that is and how we've been wounded by how we've looked at that in the past as a collective. We're being asked to grow and to shift and change the structures of our world so that it's more conducive to other people everywhere. And in that process, we find that things are not holding up the way that they used to be. And so in approaching that, it's very difficult sometimes to let go of how things used to be and to expand to a new way of thinking of things. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because I know it's a struggle. I know that it's a process and the structure of the material world is going through such tremendous shifts and changes. Just I can almost guarantee you if you look out at the roadways, you've got some kind of construction close by. If you live anywhere near a city right now, that's all being renovated and shift, shifted and changed. So that's going on within our DNA as well, within our lives, within the structure that we have in our world and in our personal lives. So I just want to tell you probably more than anything else that it's part of the process and that it isn't going to stay this way forever because it is part of the process. It's what we need to do to understand the new way of thinking that's coming in and how to process what's good for our own world and our own lives. And you are changing. You're moving closer toward that which matters to you. So 
I just wanted to encourage you a little bit and know that it can get better. It isn't going to stay the same forever. It never does. That's the one constant. Change is the one constant. So if you embrace what is new and allow the forces that be, the process to engage you and know that there is a plan. I do believe that. I believe that when you come into this world, you have a plan on what subjects and themes you want to experience. And we even have a collective understanding in our world as well, in the multiverse, because there are infinite parallel realities in my belief system. And we work our way through like swimming through water from one reality to another. And it looks so similar, each reality that we don't always know that, yes, indeed, every micro minute, microsecond, we are in a different parallel reality and a different point of decision making. And you can make a different choice at any given time, and that will set you off on a new path. So when you look at your world, know that it is changing, and you just have to set your intentions. If you set your intentions, make your goal, and look at the goal but not the process, Just know that you're going to be in the right place at the right time if you intend it to turn out well. So just keep positive thoughts. I know it's so difficult, and I would love to do a reading for you and help you see in your chart where you can make some positive changes and what it is that the universe is trying to have you understand. So that being said, I'm going to take a call. So 509, hi, how are you today? Hi, Shelly. Your conversation was so touching because I am going oh. through a lot of changes, um, mainly just unexpected. Um, mm-hmm. Just recently, my car, um, it was having like a sensor um, issue, and mm-hmm. I decided to put it away just because I didn't want to make it worse and like end up messing my transmission. Mm-hmm. But... Um, the O'Reilly's guy ended up giving us the wrong oil, and we didn't oh, no. realize that until it was already inside the car um, mm. when we had already poured it. So Uh-oh. now um, I just want to get my car fixed and mm-hmm. sell it, and I um, it's so hard because I love my car. <laughs> Aww. But um, I guess, you know, I'm just going to go with the flow, and um, mm-hmm. I'm looking to now um, – get a car like my brother's. He has a um, 350Z, and I want a white one. So, what kind? Um, what kind is it? A 350Z. It's a Nissan, okay. and I pretty much have a okay. Mercedes. Uh-huh. Um, I just can't afford to pay for, like, just just mm-hmm. the oil. I went to Chrysler and got it. It was, like, 200 Oh, for my gosh. Fluid. That's crazy. And I just, <laughs> a Nissan is more, um, like, I feel like the prices are not going to be as high as Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Um, No, they're not. I have a Nissan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, and then my phone stopped working, like, Mm -hmm. um, recently, too, and I, like, had to get another one. Um, Yeah. Like, different little things, and it's just really weird, and like Mm -hmm. I said, they're all unexpected. But I was just hoping, like, if you can tell me, um, I'm hoping to get 5000 for my car once it's Mm -hmm. fixed and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to sell it like that or anything. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, yeah. That's and good, then good like karma. <laughs> oh, go ahead. So is this Erica? I'm is trying, this Erica? Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. And I'm very, I'm very specific as to like what I want for the new car. Um, I want it to be an 08. I want it to be automatic. I want it to be white with original rims. I want it to be um, low mileage. <laughs> Um, a good price. <laughs> um, okay. I'm thinking like ten would be max. And now um, I'm having to. Um, this is just going to force me to get a job. Before, you know, um, I would be okay with just like my scholarships. But now, like, I feel I need to at least save a thousand each month for the car. Um, right. And I, I don't know. I was just hoping you can give me like a time frame of like when I would find it or, like, how long it would take for my car to sell. Um, It should be ready within the next two weeks. Um, Okay. But, yeah. Um, Yeah, within the next two weeks, 
probably would be pretty good, actually. I'm looking at your chart, and it's funny because the keywords you've said are money, uh, well, excuse me, um, car and phone and unexpected, and you have Mercury at <laughs> one degree away from Saturn and Aquarius. And thank you for reminding me. I meant to tell everybody, too, who's listening, that Venus and Mercury – together in the sky in Aquarius is going to give you those Mercury retrograde kind of energies because electronics are so wacky right now. I don't know if, I mean, obviously you <laughs> felt it, but it's like yeah. there are some kind of weird electrical warps going on right now with electronics. <laughs> and I've been, yeah. I mean, I, I'll open something and it doesn't work the way it did the last time I opened it. I'm like, I didn't do anything different. What is going on here? Mm-hmm. So I absolutely get that. And yeah, for you, Mercury, again, is at 23 in the sky, Aquarius, except for everyone. And you have 24 degree uh, Saturn in Aquarius. So you're actually having the physical structure of your transportation, which is Mercury, and your phone, which is Mercury and Aquarius, go out. So that's a very uh, hard, uh, what's the word, Uh, tangible manifestation of of (laughs) exactly that. Yeah. So, it's so um, sad. <laughs> and then Venus is your car too because it's your uh, possession, and Mercury is transportation. So when Venus uh, comes down and hits Saturn, is a good time probably to sell. And uh, you know, it's probably going to be the transition time when you also buy because that's just the way it is, right? So let me just see um, here. What a good! Oh, actually, when I when I was ahead. looking for this car, the the crossfire i took mm-hmm. almost a year finding it because i just i'm so specific and and i got a really good deal on it too and never gave me any issues um uh-huh. until with just recently just that shifting problem um right. but besides that it was just a really good car um, but i just i can't afford to you know the expenses of right of are they paying Mercedes. Are they paying for the the? I mean, since they did it wrong, they should be paying for the repair, correct? Yeah, but since I didn't have a phone, like I wasn't able to complain about it. <laughs> um, uh-huh. But now I do, and I will get in contact with um, a supervisor about it because I do feel like they should take responsibility. I mean, I understand that it was one yes. of their associates who made a mistake, and it's it's an honest mistake. Anyone can do it, but now I just need solutions. I need, you right. know. And, and you said it wasn't at a Mercedes dealer; it was a separate no. location. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to okay. Riley's for the okay. for the oil. Mm-hmm. Wow. But yeah, yeah de- definitely wanna... you need if I mean they've done damage to your vehicle because they put the wrong oil in that, and it would be recorded. I assume did they record it? Um, I have my receipts of purchase. Um, and it which says shows, what kind of oil yeah. they put in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but um, my concern was just um, like, am I going to have issues trying to sell the car? It's actually a very like stylish, attractive car, so mm-hmm. I really doubt it. But um, I'm just hoping to get at least like five thousand for it, um, and then like a time mm-hmm. frame as to like fifty, um, mm-hmm. and then like how much? I'm only my my budget is kind of like ten thousand is what I'm trying to get or Right. trying to spend actually because it's, it's it's heartbreaking actually right <laughs> so i know i love my car and um, well it, just, let me ask you this once you get it repaired are you able to drive it for a couple more months if i give you a better time to sell it in the future um yeah i mean i'm open to selling it um after fixing it i, okay. I just don't want to like it's just expensive to have that car or no, I understand. Or repair or anything. Right. Yeah. Well, um, it's because it's Venus, I would say sell it when Venus goes into Aries, which is your house of money and possessions. And that mm-hmm. will be April. It'll be April 6th through, let me just look real quick and see what we have here. Um, actually, right around the 20th of April, probably be, <laughs> if you put it up for sale then, would be a time of something happening because that's when Venus hits Uranus and Uranus ruled everything that was going on right now. So I'm guessing there will be a shift and change at that point and something, but definitely when Venus gets into your house of money and possessions Mm -hmm. and even all the way through Gemini, because that's also transportation. 
So, um, and it's in, it's also Taurus. So be, any of April after the 6th through um, the end, well, no, not even then. I mean, I would say even for three months, you would have a chance to sell mm-hmm. it if you're putting it up, if that's when you want to. Because Aries um, would be your house of money and possessions. Taurus is the ruler of that, which it, Venus goes into right after. And then it goes into Gemini, which is um, transportation and I I don't know mm-hmm. if I would sell it by probably in Gemini wouldn't be good because that's when you could have issues again. So because of the Mercury connection, so I would say before the 24th of May. So between April mm-hmm. 6th and May 24th if you're going to sell it, that would be probably the optimal timeline. Um Mars mm-hmm. is, is going to be going retrograde which is um joint possessions and also legalities. So you might have have to watch out for timing of that. I was going to tell you to wait until after Mars gets out of that whole time and gets back into Sagittarius. That's August. That's why I was, you know, not sure how long you could wait. I mean, I think you could sell it if you want between April and the end of May. Um, And if you don't do it, then I would probably wait till August after the 2nd of August because of the timing. No, it makes sense because it's not going to be ready in two weeks. So that's when I would – I think I'm going to start posting um, kind of now and see what type of interest I get and Mm -hmm. then um, have it really, like, it's it's going to start, you know, like, actually I'll have it in two weeks Mm -hmm. um, ready for any buyer that wants to take it. (laughs) Okay. Um, But, yeah, I – and when will I get the new car? Um, I don't know. Um, That's a tricky question because I, like I said, well, I'm very picky. I know. Mars goes into Sagittarius, and and that's the other thing is like, I mean, the, I appreciate the question you're asking, but the the details of giving you exactly a time, it's a little bit lengthier of a process because there are so many transits and about to retrograde planets. So, mm-hmm. you can, you know, if you could give me a couple of minutes, it's not like, you know, it's, I have to pressure you off the phone today. I've got, I, I've changed yeah. around a few different things on my program to see, you know, where yeah, people fine. come from, and I, I don't have as many callers today, so that's okay. Um, mm-hmm. I do, I will get to the other caller to see, you know. Yeah. So just hold on the line, but um, yeah, give me a second to just think, look over what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. I always think like it's worth the wait. So like because I'm mm-hmm. very specific, I I don't like to settle. Um, right. You know, for something like even if it is like a different color i can mm-hmm. always change the color and that's not mm-hmm. a big problem right but um just like the specs of it i mm-hmm. i'm gonna have my brother look for one as well like on his end mm-hmm. he found his car online and that's what um that he can be another search engine for me <laughs> well let me ask you so, this too um what area of the country are you in i'm in washington state Oh, okay. I have a cousin who works on for Nissan. He's a Nissan certified mechanic, and he his passion is Z cars. So I was just curious Ooh. to know because, um, yeah, I could have probably connected you to him if you were closer. He's in North yeah. Carolina. He's in Charlotte. Aww. So, yeah, so he's a little bit far away. Although you you know, if you contact me privately, I could give you his um, Facebook name and everything. You could contact him that way because he mm-hmm. does amazing things with the Z cars. So. Yeah, he does oh. all the vinyl decoration and stuff like that too. But nice. anyway, um, you know, yeah. right right now is a really interesting time in your chart. I'm just looking at all the stuff going on because you have Mars almost on your Venus. You've got Moon on almost on your Sun, and Saturn is right on your Mars. Like everything's at the top of your chart. Everything's in Sagittarius, which, which is transportation too, uh, but long distance transportation. So I would probably look deeper into why all these things are going on and astrologically I would say there's a reason that all this is happening right now and it has to do with shifting and changing how you look at your career believe it or not how you look at your career and how you look at what it is you want to do with your career because there's a really strong energy in your chart about moving Moving? have you been yeah have you been feeling like long distance far away hang on a second Moving away from where I live. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this for a is career. pushing me to follow 
find like a, a job within my field. Um, uh-huh. I'm going to be graduating with my law degree. Um, oh, okay. This, yeah. Um, this fall and well, I guess mm-hmm. I can start getting experience now. Um, just I'm really just open to any job, but ultimately I want to advance to you know keep looking for a firm job, like right. a law firm or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, I well, don't know what definitely. Trying to keep me. I know. <laughs> there's okay. Well, this is um, it. There, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of law energy coming still in your chart with Mars retrograde com- coming up in, Sag- in Scorpio. Scorpio rules mm-hmm. law. Okay, and your whole house of education is Scorpio and Sagittarius. Okay, so you've got Jupiter in Scorpio, you've got Pluto in Scorpio, you've got Mercury in Scorpio. So you have a really strong mind for law, for deductive reasoning and politics, all of that. I mm-hmm. think that what you're being pushed towards for a career, um, for a direction with that degree, would be something that is more um, engaged with the politics of other countries and I mean, you've got Sun and Mars in Sagittarius. That's somebody who has to go. You're an adventurer. You're a traveler. You're. It would be associated. Let's see, law for. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, more minutia of the law degree. Um, you're interested in in other cultures, so you could get involved with uh, corporate law where they're engaged in other uh, countries of doing business. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, what is it that, what kind of, and you have Saturn in uh, Aquarius, which is a huge humanitarian energy, and Mars is squaring that energy right now. So um, yeah. I'm starting to think there's going to be some kind of shift and change with the direction you're taking with your degree. Oh. Yeah, I think okay. that you may be going towards something that might be like, oh, whoa, really? I did not see that coming. Um, yeah, (laughs) but I think that you do still have a good amount of time doing something in corporate law if you're connected to that, because Pluto's in Capricorn, you know, for a good five years, and it's right on your Neptune Uranus, so there's definitely something that resonates with you about the corporate job, and, um, there's still a lot of freedom you want to have though you have saturn and aquarius in the 12th so you have to have a certain amount of ideological freedom you have to be able to infuse your beliefs and your viewpoint into what you do or you're not going to be happy mm-hmm. so, so whatever and, i'm thinking about doing now is really not what i'm going to end up doing is that what you're saying i think that's probably true what let me ask you this what have you been thinking about in the last week or two um Nothing. I've been always very firm as into going into um, like wrongfully conviction, so appellate court there you go. Um, okay. as an attorney. Uh-huh. But then my ultimate is to become a traffic judge. Like that's really all I want. But you kind of have to become an attorney first okay. and then just practice for a couple of years. So that's kind of why I'm taking that route. Okay, but I that's still interesting. Really like convicts, like. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, see that right there. That's your Saturn in Aquarius because it, and it's also Scorpio, which just needs to have justice. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then Saturn in Aquarius is the humanitarian who sees people who have been wronged. So you want to do something for that. So that's probably what you're going to drive towards. And I think that that your chart supports it. Your chart definitely supports doing something along those lines. The thing I'm seeing, though, is Mars is going to be going into Sagittarius very soon, okay? And that's March 6th. So in five days, Mars is going to go into another sign. And Mars is your drive and how you take action on things. And what you're like, oh, today I want to go out and go grocery shopping. Oh, no, today I don't want to go grocery shopping. I've got to go out to the beach, okay? It's like that. So Mars is going from this deep, um, brooding kind of thinking about how people have been wronged into Sagittarius, which is like, you know what? It's spring break and I just need to get away and party. That's what Mars is going to be doing in about five days, okay? So for you, but it's not going to stay there for long. I'm just giving you a clue. So in the next five weeks, Okay, from March 6th 
probably even a little longer than that. It's going to Mars goes retrograde on the 17th of April. So for that amount of time, he's going into Sagittarius and you're getting a really strong taste of where your attention is going to be coming later on after the after the summer cuz the summer is going to be spent going back over the law energy and education and thinking about it some more but that happens around let me look here the 28th of May so mm-hmm. from May 28th I'm just giving you timing here from May 28th until August 3rd again you're going to be going back over, and that may also have something to do with your transportation issues because you have Mercury and Venus in this house with Mars going. It's going to go forward over your Mercury at 26 Scorpio, and then he's going to hit Venus. Then he's going to go backwards over them again and forward again. So I don't know that I can totally tell you that you're done with your car issues. I think that you're still going to have some car issues, but I think the car issues, again, is a metaphor for a bigger issue in your world that you are really shifting and changing the energy around who you are and what matters to you for a career. And the car is is honestly, as silly as it may sound, is a physical manifestation of the energy that's going on with the shift and change within your own mind. And I, I don't know how else to put it, but that's pretty much what it is. Because you have mm-hmm. Mercury in the higher understanding house in Scorpio, which is intensity and passion, you have Venus in Sagittarius, which is the playful person. That's the one who has a good sense of humor. And it's right there near your north node. So you're really feeling in the next five weeks, you're going to really strongly be feeling this need to be out and be more gregarious, be in the spotlight, do something fun, get away from some of the broody energy. And I want to hear back from you because I can tell you, It's coming. You've already got a little hint of that today. Moon just went into Sagittarius today. You have a natal sun in Sagittarius and Mars in uh, Sagittarius just past that. So Saturn is asking you to take ownership of what your drive is. And your drive is to be mobile, to go seeking other things, maybe do something in education. I wouldn't be surprised if you decide to do some kind of teaching of law or something along those lines. Mm Because wherever your Mars is, that's where your drive to do something is. And your Mars is in your house of career, but it's in Sagittarius, which is, I mean, generally I say musicians, uh, comedians, uh, people with uh, the Sagittarius influence are travelers, adventurers, uh, people who connect to other cultures. If you have Mercury, if it were a little bit closer to Sagittarius, I'd say a linguist, but it's in the house of Sagittarius. So, you know, even linguistics, something that involves people of other cultures. And I'm guessing that if you stick with your path to helping people who have been wrongly accused, you're going to have a lot of foreigners or people of other cultures. That's just what you're going to attract with your Sagittarius energy in your chart. Okay? And you also have some energy around um, people who are older, the elder generation. You have Neptune and Uranus and and Capricorn in the house of connectedness to other people. So you really have a strong attraction to people of uh who are more elderly or authoritarian or, you know, some people who have been around longer. So mature mm-hmm. and um mentors. So I think that if you look close you'll find there's a mentor out there for you right now. Yeah, I will. Uh, my professor broke a leg skiing, kind of, or oh. his um, ankle. <laughs> uh-huh. Ankle. And um, yeah. he's been canceling class a lot this week. He's like, oh, i got to go visit my mom in Colorado, so I'm canceling uh-huh. class next week. Wow. <laughs> he's like, I'm so wow. sorry. I've been missing and slacking a lot this quarter. But, I mean, I feel like either either I go back home, try to fix, and arrange everything over the car, or I will go job hunt. I can have mm-hmm. both options yeah. and just seek, well, like said, seek a mentor. I think, I yeah, mm-hmm. I think the mentor is going to help. I think it's so funny you said that he broke his ankle because you have Saturn, the energy in your chart, Saturn and Aquarius with Mercury there is your professor, and ankles are Aquarius. So it's like you're telling, you're like basically telling me all the archetypal things in your chart. They're right there, but um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely you're spending a good part of the summer just kind of reviewing what it is you want to do. And mm-hmm. I think you're going to make more decisions come um, probably the later part, um, June, 
would looks better after Mars gets forward and then uh August. So mm-hmm. okay. So are but, we done with these negative um like no. situations <laughs> coming about? No? No. Okay. Mars retrograde over the summer is gonna be uh, you know, a reliving of a lot of the energy we've just had in the last couple mm-hmm. months. And by that's why I'm saying by August it'll clear up. And I think by August we're all gonna have a huge shift in, in energy. Because Jupiter goes okay. out of Virgo in health matters and cars and worry and yeah. restriction. And it goes into Libra, which is much more optimistic, much more connectedness to other people. You've got some strong energy around relationships coming in at that time. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. could you just check back with me in a, if about five weeks? I will. Let us know how it went, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah, because I just felt like I've been on a bad luck strike, and it just yeah. felt like it really does. <laughs> but it's changed, and that's and what I, I want to tell you. It's changed. Mm-hmm. It's it's not bad luck. It's the universe saying, pay attention to these issues because it's something deeper inside of you, and it's a, an expression of some place that you want to change, and your car represents freedom. Think about that. And there's some freedom yeah. that's wanting to get loose in your chart, and it has to do with your career. So that's the message that this situation is giving you. Do not forget that, okay? okay. All right. Well, take care. All right. Well, I'll talk thank to you. you. Soon. You're welcome. My Thanks. pleasure. Bye, Erica. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Let's go to 561. I'm not taking a break today because I ran right over. So 561, how wow. are you? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm thank doing well. Thank you for taking my call. My Excuse pleasure. Me? Yeah, who am I talking to? Stacy. Stacy, okay, you've got December 16th, correct? Close, 26. Oh, okay. Wow, how do I have and, you down as the 16th? That's strange. Well, I guess that makes me a Sag, but I am a Capricorn. No, you're a Capricorn. And yeah. Yeah, I started a temp job that was like October 13th. It was okay. right when Mercury retrograde was ending, but I interviewed during the retrograde. And okay. what happened was after four months, you know, I was told uh-huh. before that I'm doing an excellent job. Mm-hmm. The temp job just ended, you know, out of nowhere. And I think because another gal didn't want, didn't want to do phones and she was there maybe two months, she called in a couple of days, and I never called in. I was there every day mm-hmm. and did an excellent job, never late, never this, and I right. was let go. So huh. I was upset. Why? Did and they then, say why? No, there was no reason, just it didn't end. I guess after three months you would think you'd get benefits, right. but it clearly knows that I guess they, you know, they wanted her for some reason. She didn't want phones or whatever, and I guess maybe – they liked her, you know, I was kind of quiet. I don't, I have uh-huh. no idea. I thought, well, maybe because I started on a retrograde, mm-hmm. you know, I interviewed, yeah. I started on the 13th, the 13th is an, uh, um, an right. unlucky number. I was really perplexed about the situation. Well, tell, me, tell me the date you started. October 13th. Okay. And it's the 13th. <laughs> this was last year? Yeah. Okay. Of and so yeah. eight AM and it started eight AM. Yeah, and it ended um it ended February eighteenth. Okay, well where did you where is this uh job, if you don't mind my asking? It was doing uh, you know chart. in an office. It I'm was doing right in an office. It, it I'm was sorry, closed. city and city and state? Oh, Florida. Okay, Orlando? No, by Boca, Florida. Oh, okay. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. Now, I'm just doing a chart, and I wanted to, you know, flesh it out here. So, okay. And Mercury, yeah, that day it was still direct, but it must have gone retrograde right around that then, huh? At that moment, I did an 8 a.m. Oh, okay. I interviewed a few days before that when it was retrograde. I started just when it went direct. Okay, and then I had to get to 15. So yeah, it's about two weeks after you started that it was that it was out of the shadow period. Um, well, I'm looking at your chart, and what I'm seeing in your chart is interesting because it's kind of similar in some ways to the last caller in that you have three planets in Sagittarius also, 
And so Saturn is on your Mercury, and it's in the house of money from career. You also have a Mars return within one degree in your house of career. So there are some issues around it. And I would say, without even looking at the chart of the day you started or any of that, that you were meant to be in that job for the time frame that you were, but that there are shifts and changes going on that shift where you're supposed to be in your career. Now, tell me what kind of job it was. Oh, it was like an office, you know, an just office, office, an office position. Okay. But now I got to tell you, I've only, I went to a different employee uh, recruiter uh-huh. to tell them I was available because the more you register, the more likely you're able to find something. So uh-huh. they found me something a week later, which I am now, but it's only part time a few days. For uh-huh. the next few weeks, it's just some—it's just something to keep me going because I can't afford to be without work. So right. I'm no, wondering of course. when it looks. Yeah, for three—it's just for three weeks part time, a few days a week. It's just yesterday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's going to be a couple. The next couple of weeks, I'm wondering when it would look better for me to get anything. When I'll get something full time, just to even, okay. you know, a longer assignment. Okay, um, hang on one second. Let me look real quick here at what's going on. Well, so you my know, chart's Venus, similar to the last caller. Well, <laughs> it's it's similar in that Saturn and the Moon are touching your planets that you have in your chart, like really strongly touching your Mercury, and the Moon today is going from your um, Neptune to Venus, and then, you know, it's going to go probably all the way to your Mercury by the time nightfall comes. So... Yeah, I think that there's definitely a possibility of something coming up. But let me ask you this. Because of the similarity to the other chart, are you interested in, or would you be open to moving somewhere? Well, not right. I can't right now. Okay. Well, I, I'm looking here. You've got Saturn at 15 Gemini in your chart. And I'm not kidding you. Saturn in the sky today, you're in an exact Saturn opposition at 15 Sagittarius. So there's something about movement, and I know, I mean, I tell people, it's like, I see movement, and that that's just because so much energy is around Sagittarius right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if, some, if you heard about something where, you know, it would be a great opportunity, but not here in town. And Mars is about to go into Sagittarius on the 6th, just like I told the last caller, which not only shifts out of, the sign of Scorpio, but it also shifts out of the house of career into money from career. And right now what I'm looking at is Mars into Sagittarius may give you a window of opportunity towards something not only in another place, but also something closer to what it is that's an ideal situation for you because Neptune in Sagittarius, you're you're being asked to own that energy of what you ideally would like to have out of a career and even financially out of a career. And much closer to yeah. the kind of people you want to be with. Yes, yeah, so when you're saying about movement, it could be movement from different assignments. Like, you know, one here, one here, uh-huh. just different movement. That's what I think you probably yeah, let, mean. Let me ask you, when did this? When did they let you go? February 18th. Okay, so recently, just two weeks yeah. ago. Okay, so, yeah. It's, I guess be- Go ahead. And I, I don't, un, you know, I don't understand. I was told I was doing an excellent job, but, you know, uh-huh. it was contracting, you know, uh, I guess, yeah. temping, if they want a higher benefit, right. they, I guess temps are disposable. Well, and the scale what they are. in December, and maybe used, she wanted yeah. my job. I don't know. I still I don't know. To, I used to do temping. I completely understand. But because you said that you are with a temp agency? Mm-hmm. So they should be able to find you something else right away, right? Yeah, well, they sent me they uh, they um yeah, they sent me something that you'd have to interview for and I guess um it was something else and I guess uh-huh. um who knows if they offered it to somebody else because I didn't hear back. And then right. there was something else that they wanted if you have property management, but you have to have HOA experience and I didn't have experience of that. 
And another oh, thing they offered was ma- maintenance. You understand. Uh, yeah, no, so I, I called- you just triggered something. Like I was talking to the other lady about um, real estate, or I was talking about Sagittarius and real estate. Real estate would be a really good thing for you to get into, actually. So if you did property management, that would be a really good thing if you could do something like mm-hmm. that. You said you had to interview for that one or you don't have experience well, I don't, and but I but I but guess they'd rather that? give it to someone that has the per the um the experience. The job that I had for four months was an entry level job, but it was something that was close and keeping me busy for four months. But right. you know, I'm just kind of upset because it's like somebody else, I guess, wanted my job. To okay, fill. let me let me just give you this. Don't look at it how come it happened and somebody did this and all the all the um, that's like the drama of it. You know, that's like it's unless you can find out from your your company, your temp company, why they let you go. Maybe they could call and ask and say, was there a problem? Maybe no, that was said there's no reason. But, they, okay. They, they, they then, did. They did tell them. They said there's no reason. It just ended. Uh-huh. Like okay. the contract ended. My suggestion to you would but be But I to remember look- the other gal told me, the other gal that was hired two months after me, and uh-huh. one was hired the same day as me. The one says to me, oh, um, I don't want to be transferred to doing phones, and I'm going to be finished in the accounting department uh, mm-hmm. this week, you know, next week right. or whatever. So it just uh-huh. seemed like she wanted my job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and she was I, the same- I understand how frustrating it is to not know. But I can tell you it's you're better putting your energy into yourself and not worrying about all the intrigue that goes on with where you were because it's only going to drag you down and it's not going to change what else you need to do. So, But do you see what month things will shift of me getting yeah, more movement? I definitely will. Definitely by the 6th, which is only five days from now, Mars is going out of your house of career and shifting into the next house, which it's going into a very fortunate sign, Sagittarius which is ruled by Jupiter. It's expansion, it's fortune. So there's some really strong energy coming into your life. And Mars goes right on top of your Neptune, which is your ideal situation. So there's some opportunities definitely coming your way within Great. the week. Okay? Thanks. Um, the, I just wanted I'll... to ask one other... Sure, oh, I just wanted to ask another qu- quick question. Uh-huh. Um, do you see... <laughs> no, this is weird. Um, do you see when... Um, opportunities come for dating for you know my love life to pick up because that's been mm-hmm. kind of um, I guess okay. I put off for a while yeah no it's getting good too um, Jupiter is going to be going again in May it goes direct and once it goes direct it'll be flying right towards the end of your house of commitment and it's in Virgo which makes it a little bit prickly and your moon is in Virgo so there's this really strong ease to be alone. I mean, Virgo is the hermit, but right after that, it goes into Libra in August, I believe. I believe it's late August. Let me look it up real quick. Um, no, I take it back. It's the beginning of September, September 9th. Jupiter goes into Leo, Libra, excuse me, Libra. And that rules marriage and partnership, but it also is triggering your Pluto, which is major life change around mar- marriage and partnership. And then, um, so definitely by September, I see a lot of better things coming and major life change around something happening with relationships and partnership. So, yeah, Jupiter going direct is going to be a big help for you. So I would definitely look towards May and, I mean, May as a shift. And then as Jupiter moves towards Libra over the summer, I think you're going to be wrapping up the issues around um, work and money and things like that. And starting to open yourself more towards a partner coming in. And I think definitely within the next year, you absolutely can find someone. And they're going to be, I think that's where the long distance is coming in because all of your marriage partnership stuff, Libra, is in your house of of expansion and basically the Sagittarius ruled house, the ninth house. So I think that this is going to be somebody coming in from farther away and somebody in social circles that, or somebody of a different culture. It's either long distance or a different culture. Okay. A different culture would mean maybe like um, Asian Italian or, or Spanish or Asian. Yeah, any any place else. Yeah, yeah. I prefer. Yeah, I prefer. I prefer something different. Somebody with a European accent or somebody 
I like Asian, yeah. um, you know, Latin, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like, I'm open to that, but, or either far away, but they got to be moving here or trying to find, uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't have the financial means to go traveling out of state for a relationship. And it's well, hard to have a relationship when you're over the phone without being in person. You understand. I, I understand. I'm just going to tell you this. You've got a lot of positive energy coming in after Mars stops re- retrograding, goes forward again. So I'm definitely saying aim for August, September, October, because when Thanks. Mars gets out of Scorpio, you'll be into Sagittarius again because he's going retrograde back into Scorpio, which is more of the intense stuff around career and work, and you'll be like, oh, you know, here I am again. Um, I, and I want to give this to you so you're aware of it. I think you're going to have another temp job. I don't know that that one's going to last a great long time either because of Mars. But when Mars gets back into Sagittarius in August, then that's when things are going to be really clear for you and much better. Okay, but you said another temp job would be like how long and when? Um, well, definitely when Mars gets into Sagittarius, you'll have the opportunity. And if there is anything around real estate, I would grab it up because that's going to be. And you're much saying better. that could be like after the sixth? Um, yeah, after March sixth, Mars is into Sagittarius, yeah, and then the it hits per- your the Neptune. The person that uh, that was working yesterday, one of the heads there, they said there's possibly something in the next couple of weeks. That's uh-huh. a little bit closer to my house that they'll have for me to temp for maybe the next month or so, or right. that will help them um, because they have a project. Like right now I'm doing projects. Right. Well, um, I, I think that that's likely. Mars and Sagittarius is just going to bring some kind of real estate energy into your world. And also you have Neptune there. It's something that seems really comfortable and really connected to what you would love to have to do, something that brings you in other places and other people. So I think there's a strong connection between your job and what's going to happen with uh, love interest, too. And and there's some connection there going on. You, okay. In November, yeah, because you're saying like law, like with the at last person. I went uh-huh. to school for that, like um, legal, oh, okay. um, that legal and uh-huh. assistant Paralegal. legal. Uh-huh. But I, um, no, it, like business law, legal. I took oh, okay. some legal courses, uh-huh. so I have the background of it for legal secretarial. But they want you to be able to speak Spanish, Portuguese. Uh-huh. So that's why I haven't been able to land the job, but I want would love to learn on the job paralegal because that's, and I think that's you my can. passion. I think you can, yeah, and it doesn't surprise me. Saturn's going through your house of uh, organizations, and again, Sagittarius is all about higher education as well. And so when Mars goes in there, you may just decide to go back and take some courses as well. There's definitely strong energy around uh, expanded adult education or higher education and uh, mm-hmm. the shift in career or shift around how you do your job or what kind of job you do within your career. Absolutely, it's coming. You just have to know that there's a little bit of uh, difficulty with Mars retrograde over the summer, but it's going to be expanding, and, it's, and you're, you're in the middle of shift. It's going to be shifting. You'll, you'll see a hint of it, a taste I'm- of that expansion and positive energy coming up next week well there is like um somebody i know that's holding a gathering and um he's having certain people i guess that i know of from the past not uh-huh. like past past uh-huh. um do you see any me seeing anybody from my past having any yes. kind of connection with yes <laughs> yes, because um, Venus and Mercury are both going to be going into Pisces in the, within the month and within a couple of weeks. And Pisces is people from the past, and it's also the house ruled by Venus, which is love. So definitely someone from the past could come back in. And Neptune's there right now, thank so definitely. Okay? I really, and thank you, because I, really I was going to tell you that. You too. <laughs> I, was, I really appreciate you taking my call, because my I'm pleasure. so thrilled that it was only a week lapse of me not working rather than longer than that. Mm -hmm. So that's not that bad. And because I'm not eligible for unemployment until April. So Mm -hmm. that's what that that's scary. I couldn't afford any income coming in. You'll be fine. Next. No, you'll be um, fine. Mars, Mars is going into your house of money from career in Sagittarius, which is positive, expansive, fortune, and sign. And Venus is going into your second house in uh, Pisces, and it rules money. And it's, and it's also connected to Neptune, which is where Mars is going to be. 
So um, there's definitely, and I want to tell you this, your chart is showing a great expansion around faith and having faith, and you need to do that with this situation. You mm-hmm. need to know that it may not look like you think it should look, but it's going to be in your best interest, okay? I really thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks to you for everything. Okay. I really appreciate, <laughs> and I'll give you a follow-up. I Thanks. Thank you. You eased my mind so much. My pleasure. Well, Stacey, you take care and definitely check back in. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Bye. And to everyone else, thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you next week. And yay, Mars and the Sagittarius. Pay attention to what goes on. Bye. Stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com.